So, so when I was thinking about talking about Canada's environmental record, what came to mind was uh, a spaghetti western. Sergio Leone directed this in 1966, starring Clint Eastwood. How many people remember it? The good, the bad, and the ugly, right? A great film. Anyway, so, so start off, let's talk about the good stuff first, because, you know, what I said about oceans was a bit depressing. Uh, the good stuff, well, of course, we have to start with this year's Fraser River sockeye run. I mean, absolutely mind-blowing to have 35 million sockeye heading home to the Fraser River to spawn. That's the kind of thing that makes us feel in, that nature is actually incredibly resilient despite what we do to her. Um, and I think it's also important to give some credit to the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. Salmon run on a four-year cycle. There was a pretty good run back in 2006. And there was a lot of pressure from fishermen and others to catch more of the sockeye in 2006. And the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, to their credit, said no, and they had good return to the spawning grounds. And that, so what the lesson is that when we take less, nature gives us more. Um, other examples of uh, progress where Canada's doing well. Um, my friend Scott Wallace, who's a uh, fisheries analyst with the David Suzuki F Foundation, tells me that the Pacific halibut fishery is one of the best managed fisheries in the world. Um, and that's great, because I think we're eating halibut tonight, and it's my daughter's favorite fish. Um, other signs of progress, we've done some incredible things in terms of restoring marine habitat. In downtown Vancouver, uh, two years ago, herring returned to spawn in False Creek for the first time in decades because of habitat restoration. That's an incredible step forward. Um, and this year, there was actually a gray whale that came back to False Creek. So uh, things are looking up there. Um, Another, another sign of success is that we're finally starting to create some real important marine protected areas that can both protect and replenish biodiversity. Guayhanas on the west coast here, Lancaster Sound in the north, the gully in the west. So there are, there are uh, reasons for hope in terms of uh, Canada's environmental record as it relates to the oceans. There's also reasons to get upset. And some of the things are, um, for example, we continue to permit the, the practice of bottom trawling, which is one of the most destructive uh, types of ocean fishing here, uh, dragging heavy equipment along the bottom floor of the ocean, uh, wiping out sponges and corals along the way. And in fact, in 2006, when the United Nations was proposing a, a, a global moratorium on bottom trawling in international waters, which was supported by countries including Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, uh, Brazil, Norway, and even the United States under President George W. Bush, Canada opposed that pr proposed moratorium and it did not proceed. So that's a black eye for Canada. Another thing is, the, uh, you know, despite the lessons of the Atlantic cod collapse, we still have fisheries on the Atlantic coast that are poorly managed. And probably the worst example is the, uh, the Atlantic longline fishery for swordfish and tuna, which uh, Catches, it's estimated it catches about a thousand loggerhead turtles uh, as bycatch every year. Also hammers leatherback turtles and uh, blue sharks. And again, another international black eye for Canada. This year, uh, the Atlantic bluefin tuna was proposed to be uh, listed as a protected species under the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. Uh, Japan opposed that listing, and Canada helped out Japan in blocking the listing of Atlantic bluefin tuna. And, you know, one of the most mind-blowing things is that the Canada's Department of Fisheries and Oceans continues to promote Canada's Atlantic bluefin fishery as a model of sustainability. I mean, give me a break. This is a fish that's on endangered species lists around the world. It's currently at about, uh, its population has declined by 80% uh, because of overfishing. Uh, we're still fishing it, and we call that a sustainable fishery. Uh, I don't think so. Um, we also have, I mentioned we've started to protect marine protected areas, but we still have a long ways to go. We have five million square kilometers of uh, terrestrial ocean that belongs to, that Canada is responsible for, and only 1% of that is protected. Well, uh, our goal is 10%, so we, get, we need to like speed that, speed that along. Uh, we also have a problem here on the west coast where Canadian waters have become the toilet bowl of the cruise ship industry. And this came as a bit of a shock to me that they've got strong regulations for dumping sewage and gray water in Alaska and Washington. So what happens is cruise ships basically cross their legs while they're in Washington waters or Alaskan waters, and when they get to Canada, they let her loose. Um, and you know, that, we, that's, just not, that's just not acceptable. Um, there was, in fact, there was, a, there was a cruise ship that was caught dumping uh, sewage and effluent into the Strait of Juan de Fuca, just south of Vancouver Island, a couple of years ago. They were charged by the American government they were taken to court and they were fined $100,000 uh, 
uh, for dumping sewage. They were convicted on seven counts of dumping uh, wastewater into American waters. They were, uh, they were found not guilty on three charges because they had been dumping in Canadian waters. So, you know, it just goes to show you. So, that's the bad, and now we get to the ugly, which is uh, Canada's record when it comes to climate change. As I mentioned, it's emissions of greenhouse gases that are causing uh, the warming of the oceans, the acidifying the, of the oceans. And here, Canada made uh, a legal commitment under the Kyoto Protocol to reduce our emissions 6% below 1990 levels by 2010. Well, it's 2010, and Canadian emissions are 30% over 1990 levels. We didn't even come close to meeting our legal commitment. We are ramping up exports of coal from Canada, a substance that the uh, renowned American climate scientist James Hansen calls the single greatest threat to civilization and life on Earth. We are ramping up expansion of the tar sands in Alberta. And I think even worse than what we're doing in terms of cranking oil out of the tar sands, we're creating technologies that will allow countries like China, Russia, Trinidad and Tobago, Venezuela, and Madagascar to uh, extract their dirty oil out of the ground. So it, we're having a knock-on effect there. And, you know, we still, the average fuel efficiency of, of new cars in Canada is still slightly behind that of a Model T Ford from the 1910s. I mean, is it time we got more fuel efficient vehicles in Canada? Yeah. I think so. Uh, we're still building homes uh, that the three little pigs would be embarrassed of. Um, I was in Sweden a couple of years ago doing some work for the government of Sweden, and I got to visit a townhouse complex where about 20 units, beautiful, modern looking, of course, you know, the Swedes have great design taste. But the amazing thing about this townhouse complex, they didn't have furnaces, they didn't have fireplaces, there was no forms of heat in this 20 unit com complex. It was built so well that just the, just the little bit of heat that comes from your refrigerator, your appliances, and your bodies was enough to keep it warm throughout a Swedish winter. Pretty amazing. I went on a tour of it, and I actually took one of the, uh, one of the owners aside and said, come on, what about on a cold day in January when you're really, really freezing your butt off? And you know what she said? She said, well, then we have some friends over for lunch. No, we have some. Right? <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's the heating system in a well-built building. So... Um, Canada's record on, on climate change becomes even more embarrassing when you think of what we're doing internationally. We dominate the world in terms of Dinosaur of the Day awards at international climate change negotiations. It's, a, it's an award given to the, the nations that are the most obstructive uh, in terms of making progress on international climate change agreements. And so I just want to, uh, so, so that's kind of the big picture about uh, climate change. 